Actually, an asparagus sorbet. <laughs> Freshly cooked right in front of us. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, a happy dance. Hey folks, welcome to your food tour of the Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady. You know, Virgin Voyages has put a lot of emphasis on the food. It's supposed to be an elevated experience above the other cruise lines. All of the eateries are included in your cruise fare. There is no such thing as a specialty restaurant on Virgin Voyages. They do have a couple of upcharge items called treat yourself if you want, but you can eat all week without spending an extra dime on any food anywhere on this ship. So did the Scarlet Lady live up to the hype? Will you enjoy the food on this ship? Let's get started. We literally just got on the Scarlet Lady. We're sitting out here at the dock. So outside it's the dock. Inside it's the dock house. Gentleman is uh, cooking hanger steak right out here on the deck. There's a grill running right over here next to us. I had grilled octopus. Got this hanger steak. I had some grilled shrimp. Rebecca had a goat cheese polenta. She tried. Oh wait, she's in the witness protection program. You're not supposed to see her. <laughs> We've just gotten started on Virgin Voyages, and the food is living up to the hype. The other cool thing, we got a lot of grab and go stuff. So they had a little um, charcuterie right inside, a uh, little uh, cheese and meat platter, and a little grab and go tray just inside the door. So we're sitting out here on deck seven. This is the dock overlooking the after the ship. And I got the bee's please. It was kind of a play on the bee's knees. Uh, this cocktail was about $13. It looks like the cocktails were running about, say, nine to about $15. So, you know, about what I would expect on most cruise lines, but bee's please. So cheers everybody from the Scarlet Lady. Mm. And we are in Gun Bay, which is the Korean barbecue here on the Scarlet Lady. And uh, the appetizers have already come out. And they had this drinking We're game drink with soju. So let's start the drinking like, game. This should be weird. I don't drink, so this should be interesting. Do the real game. One, two, four. Come One, two, four, five, six, seven. Come 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 Wow. Ten. Eleven. Fifteen. 17. 18. 20. 21. 22. Everything has come out and it looks amazing. So these are vermicelli noodles called japchae. Mm. Really good. And we've got a scallion and shrimp. Nice little sauce here on the side. You can hear the drinking game going on behind us. Scallion <laughs> mm. and shrimp. Oh my god. Really, really good. Absolutely outstanding. Mm. Look at that. We're getting more food, as you can see. As if we didn't have enough food, we have more food coming. You know, you, you say, oh, well, all the restaurants are included, so we're probably not going to get that much food. Wrong. You're going to get a lot of food. So we have, what is it, seaweed salad? We have like a seaweed salad here. Very interesting. Seaweed, not my favorite. Rebecca probably likes it more than I do. But you gotta try everything. I'm really digging the noodle, and I'm really digging that shrimp scallion cake. Ooh, ow. The bimbap is really hot, so yes, I'm not gonna pick it up. I am just going to scoop this up. Well, bimbap is always a uh, it's always a very hot bowl anyway. And this was what now? Mung bean and kimchi. And a little thing here. Mmm, really good. You know, Virgin has a lot of hype on the food. This is, you know, this is just like going to a specialty restaurant on any ship. I love this, so I don't know if you can see it. Christine has a crystal ball. What is that? It is a... Cake pop, disco water, and it has pop rocks. It has what? Pop rocks. Uh, it has pop rocks in it. It's a, it's a disco ball drink with pop rocks in it. George and Christine, how are we doing? Amazing. It's amazing, right? We doing good. So, how is everything? You enjoying it? Good. Yeah. Awesome. Where are you guys from? Canada. You're from Canada? But originally from the Philippines. Awesome. And that's why we love to cruise, people pick on me all the time because we go cruising but we get to meet lovely people from all over the world you see 
Mmm. I'm enjoying it. As you can see, grilled shrimp is absolutely beautiful. Cooking the meat right here in front of us. So, you know, you start out the meal with stuff prepared in the kitchen, and then the second half of the meal, start cooking right here at the grill, right smack in front of us. Freshly cooked right in front of us. Good by itself. Mmm. Mmm. One thing you don't get in the video is just that aroma. The aroma is absolutely amazing. So Gun Bay is not a quiet restaurant. If, if you're thinking about a quiet romantic place to have dinner, this is not it. This is the fun party restaurant for sure. I'm terrible with chopsticks, so just don't laugh at me. You can wrap it in lettuce. I can wrap it in the lettuce? Oh, okay, cool. Aha! Uh -huh. That's why I have my wife. She actually listens to what goes on. Mmm. Look at that. Freshly cooked right here in front of me at the table. It is just after 8 p.m. and we are finally sailing away. So we're sitting here in Gun Bay enjoying dinner and we're, we got a beautiful view of Miami right outside. We are sailing on the Scarlet Lady. Woo! So finally, this is the only place on the ship where you can get this. This is a soft serve. This is uh, rice milk and sesame ice cream, like sesame seeds. And then they gave us a sesame granola down here on the bottom. And then, of course, some marshmallows on top to sprinkle on it. The world's so tiniest why not? marshmallows. World's tiniest marshmallows. They're so cute. Oh, my God. Cute, huh? Love this. Mm, that's good. It's different. And if you look out the window, look at that. There's Miami going by. We are sailing away. That sunset. Absolutely beautiful out there. But Gun Bay, not a quiet place. You're going to come here to party. You're going to come here to have fun. And you're going to come here to eat really good. So down here at the Social Club, they have the Social Club Diner with a whole bunch of different kinds of hot dogs, including a vegan hot dog. I am going with the original Reuben. So it's a hot dog as a Reuben. The Reuben hot dog right here, it looks messy, sloppy. Good hot dog. Good hot dog, got the corned beef there with it. Now, if you're a vegetarian, they do have the vegan hot dog up there, and Rebecca said it tastes like the better than meat. It got sausage. She said the sauce was really good on it as well. So, even if you're a vegetarian, you can come on down here to the Social Club Diner and get yourself a hot dog. So, we are in the test kitchen tonight, and the menu, the menu tonight is corn, salmon, beetroot, shrimp, lamb, asparagus, and strawberry. Literally all that's on the menu and then we don't really know how they're going to prepare it <laughs> we'll just eat it so we just placed our orders and as it was explained to us this is a micro gastronomical adventure so what that means is the portion sizes are a little bit smaller but these items are prepared in ways that we have probably never seen now rebecca went with the vegetarian option she has a couple of other things, which is going to be kind of cool, so we'll be able to see what she's got. And then they have a beer pairing, and a wine pairing, and at a cocktail pairing, right? Or, or a non-alcoholic mocktail, or you could just get one cocktail. I decided to get one cocktail. George is doing the beer pairing, so we'll get to see what that's all about. Are you doing the wine pairing? I'm doing the wine pairing. So Christine's doing the wine pairing, and Rebecca's doing the mocktails. So we're going to get to see a little bit of everything here, so this is going to be a lot of fun. And this is a nutty old-fashioned that has amaretto in it. Uh, Buffalo Trace, and looks like I got a stick of cinnamon in there. So, cheers to all of you. Oh my God! If you like old fashioned, that could be one of the best old fashions I have ever had. Cheers, my friends. Okay, so course number one is corn. And it's, uh, there's a little popcorn on the top. I know she said there's a hot oil around the side. And then the rest of it is corn. <laughs> and then uh, a lovely bread that they brought to the table. She said this is made with polenta and truffle oil. Truffle oil. Now, when you come here, the menu could be different. This is a brand new menu that was uh, that's different than what we saw online before we came on the ship. So the menu could change. So the corn, I'm going to get a little bit of that oil on my fork. 
How do you describe that? I don't even know how to describe that. It is. So Christine just said it's almost like a custard. And it's got multiple textures going on because it's got the, um, the popcorn on the very top. Very, very tasty. And then that oil that's going on on the side. Very, very nice. So Rebecca has a tomato appetizer, a Bloody Mary mixed caviar. Oh. Mm, wow. I know. Holy cow, that's absolutely delicious. Did I mention the old fashioned is really good? Okay, so we're on our next course. We, we got the salmon right here, and then Rebecca got a tofu dish. You saw with that little smoke that they lifted off the smoke, it smelled so good. It really did. Let's see what we got. It looks almost I like it's a, a, almost like sushi style. They're not good at cooking really things, I don't there. I cook it for George. That's really good. Very mild. So the cucumbers are apparently done a couple of ways. Uh, fresh, pickled, and something else. Did I mention how good the old fashioned is? I'm having a good time at the test kitchen. Can you tell? There's a beetroot with a little cloud on the top. She described it kind of like an open, uh, an open faced ravioli or something like that, right? Food is all about exploration, yeah. right? So you not, you may not like everything. I ate it all. Was it's it better than me with salmon? I like it more with, with. Um, I think there's like some basil or something on there. I, don't know. I like it more when I get that. Oh, sorrel. I don't know what. Well, it tastes almost like a basil. So it's sorrel on here, but it tastes almost like a basil. That was not my favorite dish, but that's okay. We've got how many more do we have? We have three more. <laughs> Three more plates coming out here. It's a very, very sad moment in the meal. The old fashioned is just about gone. I don't know if I'm going to order another one or not, but it's a very sad moment in the meal. And I'm very excited. The lamb is coming next. So I had a choice between shrimp and lamb, uh, and I went with the lamb. So let's see what that is like. Look at that. A uh, little lamb juice on top of it. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Well, I'd love to just pick this up and eat it, but you know, I don't think you're really supposed to do that here. It's nice with the barley, too, instead of rice. Yeah. Can I try your mm. That is really good lamb. So Christine doesn't really like lamb all that much. She just said, oh, that's really good. Is. Okay. Christine is saying that the shrimp is excellent, too. So Rebecca got a pumpkin risotto. She went with the vegetarian menu again. So we got barley, we got some pumpkin foam. stuff, foam, pumpkin foam. Oh my God, that's ridiculous. This is probably the kind of meal that you would pay, let's say you were on a celebrity ship, you would probably pay at least $55 for this meal per person, at least. And now we're going to head into some sort of a dessert. Uh, dessert is going to be strawberry tonight. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot. There's a palate cleanser course. It is an asparagus course that's going to come after this. Then we get the strawberry. So this is essentially an asparagus sorbet. Cabernet Sauvignon with the foam underneath. It's supposed to be a palate cleanser. You want to make sure that you get some of the foam with the asparagus. They go very well together. Never had anything like this ever. Strawberry multiple ways. We have strawberry jam. We have like a little freeze dried strawberry. White is white chocolate with a little wasabi. So this is, we're finally at course number one, two, three, four. We're finally at course six. So this is the end of it. And it has been a little bit over two and a half hours that we've been sitting here. So there's a little spice going on with the white chocolate. Yeah. This is really cool. This is the kind of thing that you would probably see on a menu and never order. But since it just said strawberry and you don't know what's coming, it's really cool. That's the cool thing about this meal. We literally had no idea what was coming. So if you like to explore food, it's for a food journey where you literally have no idea. You're not in control of your meal at all. I would say go for it. This is an amazing culinary experience. Cheers. So we're looking for some late night eats and tonight the pizza joint is open until 1.30. It's just called the pizza place. Uh, so Rebecca, Christine ran down to the pizza joint. Rebecca got a classic pizza. This is just uh, sauce and cheese. Mm -hmm. A nice flavor, look at that crust. The crust is cooked beautifully down there. I went with the white pizza. That's your ricotta, your mozzarella. It's got some oregano on it, got a little garlic in there. I, I like this more than the classic. So if you got the late night munchies, 
do this, or you can go to uh, Diner and Dash, which your Dash and Diner, whatever it is, and uh, they have breakfast all day, and sometimes they have some other things as well. Pizza? Hey, that gets a thumbs up from me on the Scarlet Lady. Mm. Next up is Extra Virgin, where I had some microphone issues, so I'm going to narrate this one. But this is the Italian restaurant with fresh-made pastas and sauces. Now, typically, this is a four-course meal. Appetizer, pasta, entree, and a dessert. But we only had about 75 minutes for dinner because we had to make it to our show. So they combined the pasta and the entree course together. So we did it as a three-course meal. So we started with this charcuterie board. And what was really nice, we told them Rebecca doesn't eat meat. So they gave us a special tray set up with the meats on one side and the cheeses on the other. So if you've got somebody who doesn't eat meat, just tell them and they'll go ahead and separate the two out for you. Putting a little honey on the Parmesan was absolutely amazing. Cheers to an awesome dinner. My appetizer were the braised mini meatballs. Oh my God, the smoked mozzarella, the pancetta. You could make a meal out of this. I mean, you could just tell them bring like three or four bowls of these and you could make an entire meal out of these. George went with the calamari. They were okay. Christine got the rivolita, which was amazing. The cannellini beans, the escarola salsa. Oh, so delicious. Rebecca got the crispy artichoke, which was presented in a most interesting way. And she said the caper aioli that came with it was really good. Next, we had the combined pasta and entree courses, and I went with the spaghetti alla bangoli, the uh, spaghetti and clams, and a new pork cheek entree. The spaghetti was perfect al dente, and the sauce was really, really good. Now, not as good as mom's, but really good. The pork cheek, I, I almost can't even describe it. It was just like melt in your mouth. Absolutely delicious. Rebecca got the potato gnocchi and the sea bass entree. Now, the gnocchi were really, really soft. They were too soft. The sauce was amazing, so maybe that sauce with a different pasta would have been really good. And the sea bass was absolutely delicious. I keep saying that, but it was delicious. George went with the meat ragu, which had some oxtail in it. Very interesting. And then he had a lovely steak for the entree. Christine also got that potato gnocchi and she went with the spatchcock chicken, which she said was some of the best chicken she's ever had. It was so good. And of course, for dessert, I had to go with the tableside affogato. I mean, it's, it's ice cream and coffee, my two favorite things. And they bring out this whole cart where you can choose like which gelato you want, the, what toppings you want to put on it. And then of course, they put the espresso on it. And she even asked you if you want a little side of espresso to go with it. Christine went with the chestnut dessert. It looked like a Hershey's kiss and then she cuts it open. Oh my God, it was so beautiful. Beautiful, so tasty. And Rebecca went with the chocolate olive oil cake, which was topped with pear. Oh my gosh, just like melt in your mouth. And that was dinner at Extra Virgin. Off to the show. <laughs> Hey folks, before we move on to Razzle Dazzle, if you enjoy what we're doing, if we're bringing you some value in your cruise research, please consider hitting that subscribe button and click that notification icon. We really appreciate your support. Did I mention how good the old fashioned is? So we're having brunch in Razzle Dazzle. The Razzle Dazzle is a vegetarian vegan restaurant, but they do have some naughty items if you want to order meat. So, you know, you don't all have to be veggie vegetarian in your party. Cheddar jalapeno croissant that as you can see, it's got some serious jalapenos down in there. Ooh, that is hot. They're not kidding when they say jalapeno. That definitely has a spice to it. I'm going to hand this over to Rebecca. Apple what? Cruffin. Cruffin, an apple cruffin. Croissant muffin. Cruffin. Mm -hmm. Yum. Christine and George have never seen me do this stuff on camera, so they haven't seen me do this. Chocolate chip scone. Rebecca's least favorite. We'll just throw it away. No. Mm, very tasty. If you're having it with tea or coffee, it'll be better. It's a little dry. What is this? Coconut milk fairy toast. Look at this. It's like something that, you know, when you were a kid, you would have totally had this. <laughs> It just makes me giggle. Totally fun. It's kind of dry, but you got all that crunch going on on top, and it's really sweet. It's almost like eating cereal, but it's bread. A lot of times, you know, the cruise ship coffee isn't all that great. It's actually good coffee. I like coffee. It's actually really good coffee down here. They call this mushroom tartare, like a like a little mushroom salad of some sort. It looks absolutely delicious. Mmm. Holy crud. Okay, if you really like mushrooms, mm. mushroom tartare. It's absolutely amazing. So we're sharing all of this for the four of us. This is great. You get a little bit of everything. Everybody gets like a bite. I highly recommend doing this because remember, this is all included. So this is what now? Like a watermelon sesame salad of some sort. It looks like a pizza. 
These guys are cutting it. I'm gonna eat it like a pizza. We'll see what happens. Mmm. Mmm. It's almost like a parfait bowl, but you're eating it right on the watermelon. We've got a uh, melon salad. Christine noted that there's some spice to the uh, sauce. It like, it like hits the back of your neck. Oh, what it does. Harissa. It's a harissa vinaigrette. That's what it is. Really good. So we got uh, cantaloupe so and honeydew. Uh, yeah, you're good. Uh, you're good. Go ahead, yeah. yeah you can top it off. Sir. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it. You're welcome, sir. So the last of our starters is the avocado toast. And this actually looks like it's a, a soft-boiled egg or hard-boiled egg. It's actually the lemon. And they grilled it a little bit, so it actually looks like an egg, but it's a lemon. Alrighty, thank you. Appreciate it. They just brought me my breakfast, but I'm gonna try the avocado toast. Really good. Really, really good. Now I got my razzle dazzle breakfast. Impossible sausage, I got over easy eggs, and I got some potatoes. Oh, and then we also got cheesy tots for the table. Cheesy tots, how much fun is that? So uh, George ordered the chicken sandwich over there and the waiter warned us. He said, well, you know, it tends to be dry. He ordered it anyway and he said, good. Good and moist and he's got massive french fries over there. They look amazing. Mmm. Babe, okay, I didn't know that was a vegetarian sausage. I would totally believe that's meat. Excellent mushrooms. Oh, man. Potatoes. Mmm. Good. Yeah, really, really good. And I got a little grilled tomato here as well. Mm. The whole breakfast is just good. Cheesy tots. Gotta have a cheesy tots. Not bad. Well, not, not the best tots I've had. They could be crispier, but they're not bad. But razzle dazzle. And try it out if you're here on the Scarlet Lady. Why not? Good food. Welcome to Pink Agave with this iconic entrance where, you know, you have to take a selfie. I mean, come on. These lights are so freaking cool. Pink Agave is the elevated Mexican restaurant on the Scarlet Lady. And one cool fact, it has the most mezcal and tequila at sea. Over 120 different types of mezcal and tequila. I started the meal with one of my favorites, which is an Oaxaca old fashioned. Tequila, mezcal, chocolate bitters, and some simple syrup, and you've got an amazing cocktail. Okay, I'm not gonna butcher the names of these dishes. This is a potato small plate, and it was really good, but the peppers in this dish, and pretty much everything in pink agave, were spicy. I gave all of mine to Rebecca. This was a cool take on street corn, so instead of the cob, it was actually all mixed together, and man, it had a really good limey flavor, if, if that's a word. It was limey. Oh, so good. The tuna was very reminiscent of a caviche. It was so good. Fresh guacamole. I mean, how can you go wrong, right? Fresh guacamole. It was really good. And the chicken enchilada wasn't bad. It was, it was my least favorite. I really liked the cream that was with it, but the chicken enchilada itself well, it was kind of meh for me. Now, that sizzling shrimp with the mole, holy crap, was that good. I mean, if I was going to go there again, I would do the potatoes, the street corn, and the sizzling shrimp. Now, I went with the duck because you really don't see duck all that often. So when I do, I tend to order it because I really like it. But they gave it these little tortillas so we can make them into tacos. That was handy. And I got to say, the mole, absolutely freaking amazing. But the duck itself, I guess the only way I can describe it, it was a little bit on the bland side, which really surprised me because the way it looked, it looked like it had been seared up. It looked beautiful, but the flavor was just okay. So I would not order the duck again. Now Rebecca got the stuffed poblano pepper. Wow. That was really good. Now, Christine went with the pork and she said it was just like fall apart amazingly good. George said the sea bass was absolutely amazing. So unless you really, really want the duck, I would go with one of the other entrees. Now, for dessert, our server just said, I'm bringing you one of everything. So she did. And the bread pudding was good. I enjoyed it. Rebecca does not like raisins, so she didn't eat it. But I thought it was good with the uh, ice cream. This puff pastry thing with the tamarind and pineapple, it wasn't bad, it was good. The chocolate taco was fun. Now, they weren't the best desserts we've ever had, but they were a nice way to finish the meal. Welcome to Brunch at the Wake, where you are literally as close to the waterline of the wake as you can get. Be sure to look out the beautiful windows out the back. I have to mention, Rebecca was ordering mocktails all week, and she said they were really good. And in particular, this Bloody Mary, she said, is one of the best Bloody Marys she's ever had. 
But George and I started with the clam chowder, and I love this presentation with the clams and stuff in the bowl, and then they just pour right over it. It had a really nice smoky bacon flavor. It could have been a little bit hotter for me. I mean, it was warm, but I, I wish it was a little bit hotter. Rebecca really enjoyed the poached shrimp, and Christine said the wedge salad was awesome. Now get this, Rebecca and I both went with a soft shell crab eggs benedict on a corn cake. Now the corn cake really falls apart very easily, but oh my god, the flavor of the corn cake working with the crab was so, it's almost like, almost like having crab on a cornbread. George got the classic steak and eggs, which he said was awesome. And oh my God, look at this brioche French toast that Christine got. She said it was just as good as it looked. Now for dessert, I went with this crepe cake, which was like eating a cheesecake. Oh my God, it was so good. I've never had anything like it. And Rebecca was able to get the panna cotta because it's not made with gelatin. It's actually a vegetarian panna cotta. So if you're a vegetarian and you always wanted to have panna cotta, you can have it at the wake. Well, one of the things that might surprise you about Virgin Voyages and the Scarlet Lady is that they do have an afternoon tea on sea days. There's one fee for tea and another fee for champagne, so it is kind of ironic that on the cruise ship that has pretty much all of the food included, this is an extra price. And I know that puts off some people, but it is quite the lovely tray. I don't know, little pastries, little finger sandwiches, and then um, I forget which tea I got. Mm. What do we got up here? Scones. Clotted cream. So it's the real deal. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is tasty. That is really, really good. I'm gonna say that this is a red puff pastry. I really don't know. Let's take a bite and see if we can figure it out. It's really good. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's delicious. A little pink macaron. Oh, thing there. That's like macaron perfection there. Mm. Little tea. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Next up on the hit parade is going to be a little rainbow cake. Oh my god, this is so freaking adorable and it's so vibrant. How bright those colors are. <laughs> it's just a really good cake. A really good cake and that's a really dark chocolate up on top. Pommier, you said? Something like that? A little cookie going on there. Mm. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. This is a lovely little, I, I'm, get, I'm guessing it's probably a dark rye bread underneath here. But this is chicken liver, which I'm going to tell you right up front. Generally not a fan of chicken liver. But I'm on a cruise ship, and I will try different things. So I don't know, maybe they're going to surprise me with chicken liver. So let's see. They surprised me. <laughs> It's actually really good. It's got a smoky flavor to it. I think these are radishes maybe on top? I could actually eat a whole sandwich of this. So this is something our server called an Oreo. It's actually a little cucumber on the top with some cream and then like a little chocolate cakey thing underneath it. Let's see. Is that cream cheese? It, I think it is, but I can't tell what it's mixed with. I think it's cream cheese and there's something in there as well. It's not at all what you expected when you bit into it. They just keep continuing to surprise me on this cruise ship. So yet another surprise from the food and beverage and dining here on the Scarlet Lady. Rebecca knew there was an afternoon tea on the ship. I didn't know. And what a lovely afternoon tea it is. The galley is Virgin's answer to a buffet, but this is set up like a food hall with predominantly everything made to order, so it's nice and fresh. The other benefit is Virgin has really cut down on food waste by not just having tons of food sitting out there that they have to throw away every four hours and rotate in. This is where you'll get the self-serve soft drinks, including these small Coca-Cola freestyle machines. Now they don't have everything, but they've got the primary Coke products, and you can go get yourself some coffee and tea over here. They've even got a wine dispenser, and that is an extra charge, but it is right here. You'll also find the Grounds Club too, which is another coffee shop. The food options include tacos, paninis, all-day breakfast, a burger bar, a bread bar, a sweet side bar, the salad bar, bento boxes, and you'll find some popsicles from time to time. And if you get the munchies anytime, day or night, that all-day breakfast, the diner and dash, is your 24-hour eats. 
One really cool thing is this grab and go station just as you're walking out to the pool. Be sure to check that. There's some really great little finger foods and sandwiches and things like that that you can just take right out to the pool. Now the food quality in the galley was definitely a step above the buffets because you know for the most part it's all made to order so you don't just have the big masses of food just sitting there. When the galley is not busy, you can basically just walk up to any one of these food stations and place your order. And when the galley is busy, they want you to go straight to a table and place your order restaurant style. We found the system kind of broke down because the staff was just kind of running all over. We were ignored for a bit. It took a while to place our order. And once we did place our order, some of the food really took some time to come out. I do have to add though, once we were able to place that breakfast order, I got the French toast burger at the burger bar. Yes, French toast with eggs, with bacon, with a burger. Holy crap, was that good. And I'm gonna leave you with this incredible dessert. So I just had dinner at Gun Bay and of course, can't pass up the sweets. Oh my God, these are amazing. Why are you hiding? She's like hiding back there, running out of the camera range here. So what's your name? Hello, Anna. Anna? Anna. Nice to meet you. Oh, do you, do you have a sister, Elsa? No, no. <laughs> sure, everybody asked her that. <laughs> and Anna highly recommends the Scarlet Lady, so I will gladly try a Scarlet Lady, please. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh my God, it's so beautiful, yay. Thank you so much. I didn't even look to see what it was. You can. Oh my God. Look at the inside of that. Look at the inside of that. There is some serious dark chocolate. Christine, look at that. Ooh. Let's all say it again. Ooh. Ah. Oh my God. I know, Walter, just shut up and eat it, right? Mmm. For the sweet side, get the Scarlet Lady. Oh my God, it's so amazing. It is very sadly our final night on Scarlet Lady, and now we're ready to enjoy dinner at the wake. So they brought us some bread. Look at this. This is like ridiculous. Oh my God, it's so hot. That's like one, two, three, four, five, six, and I just touched them all. See, I'm touching every last one. These are all mine. Mm. George, what did you just order? I ordered the tomahawk. The tomahawk. It's it's an upcharge, a an sixty-five upcharge. dollar upcharge. But there's some good reviews ounces. about it. It is a sixty-five dollar up upcharge. Just so you all know, there are a few things that they have here that are upcharges, yep, so and they're called treat yourself. So once again, like we did at brunch time, we've got the clam chowder. Mm, I'm really enjoying that. We're gonna see what this is all about. As you can see, it's literally like a whole half piece of a bone just sliced right down the middle. I've never had this. I honestly have no idea what to expect. So I see the slices of the bread here. Should I be putting it on the bread? So I've got this little, yeah, I got a little piece of uh, bone marrow here. Let's see what happens. That's right, quite good. I'm gonna pass it over to George. Let George right. try it. So as you can see, we have two absolutely stunning table side presentations going on here. Uh, Rebecca's fish is being cut out of the salt shell that is in there and being deboned and dropped on a plate. And then George's ridiculous tomahawk steak is being sliced up and being prepared. That's actually kind of cool. They don't just put a big old hunk of meat down on a plate. They actually slice it all up for him. They sliced it beautifully thin and then set it up on the plate. And beyond that, we've got twice baked potatoes. We've got asparagus sitting over there. we still got the shrimp. Uh, we got some french fries sitting over here. Sauteed mushrooms. Sauteed mushrooms. we got cream spinach. They just brought one of every side for us. Again, you know, we're not paying for it, so they just brought one of every single side out here. I got the shrimp and grits, so did Christine. But you know what? I, I really want to try one of these shrimp. I didn't get to the shrimp yet. Very good. So I'm having a, a creamy sauce on the shrimp. Mmm. Yum. I am going to give this shrimp and grits a try. My God, that tomato sauce on the top is ridiculous. We've never had uh, shrimp and grits that has all this tomato sauce on the top. Digging down in there. Mmm. We're not gonna try some of this ridiculous tomahawk steak. Look, look what they do. I mean, look how, look at that. It's so beautifully cut, so nice and thin. You know, a lot of times when you order a big steak from a restaurant, they just put that big old hunk of meat down there and just let you hack away at it. This definitely. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. It's a good steak, George. And he's got some beautiful roasted garlic sitting right there too. 
Rebecca gave me a little bit of fish here. Moist. So moist. Holy crap, that's really good. I know. So basically our server uh, just brought out one of everything. So we're just kind of passing it around family style. Because that's what you do when you're having dinner with friends. You just kind of pass the food around. Yes. So George, how are we doing, my friend there? How is that? Very good. It is delicious. Perfectly prepared. Uh-huh. The presentation was wonderful. It is delicious. Yeah. That's awesome. You're in awesome. the lake. I'm a scarlet lady. Go to the tomahawk. Go for the tomahawk. Christine, the shrimp and grits. How are we doing? The inside of the grits are moist. Mm -hmm. I think there's mozzarella in the inside. Are we there? Ooh, I haven't gotten there yet. And of course, we all know how much Rebecca likes to be on camera. So Rebecca, how's the fish? <laughs> Freaking amazing. Freaking amazing. It is literally the best entree I've had all week, and that is saying something. Rebecca says the best entree she's had all week, which is saying something. I look like I'm on Broadway right now. This is kind of a cool shot. I'm liking this. Look at this cool ceiling above me. Now we've got the dessert menu because, you know, when you're on a cruise, if you say no to dessert, they'll throw you off the ship. So you have to have dessert on a cruise ship. You don't want to walk the plank. For dessert, we've got the lemon cheesecake, and it looks like a lemon. So let's see. So it's actually a hard shell on the outside. Let's see. Oh. I it's like, I want to say it's like chocolate. It breaks right in. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my god. That is really good. So the shell is chocolate. It looks like a lemon, tastes like white chocolate. But the actual creamy cheesecake going on in there is total lemon. Delicious. The dining has been simply outstanding. Probably the best overall of any cruise line we have ever been on in terms of just the consistency, the quality, the presentation, the service, everything about it. It lived up to the hype. I mean, it's supposed to be a foodie cruise line. It really is. Thank you to Virgin Voyages for a week of amazing, amazing meals. Cheers, everybody. Mm.